Hello and welcome to IT Origins from Gestalt IT. I'm your host, Rich Straffolino. Each time we meet, we talk to an IT innovator, entrepreneur, or pro, and we find out how they got started in this particular field. Today we're going to be talking to Dong No. He was a editor with CNET.com for almost 20 years and is now an independent IT consultant as well as writing at DongKnows.com. So Dong, how did you get started in IT? What was kind of your entry point into tech? I'm, I'm curious to know how you got your start. This is actually really interesting. It's a long story because uh, you have to go back all the way where I was born and when, because it's important. So I was born in Vietnam, and in, in specifically in northern Vietnam, it's a very small village about 70 miles from Hanoi. Now, I have to keep in mind that I was born right after the war ended, the Vietnam War, or over there we call it the American War. And my village is on the way you know, out of Hanoi. So when they bomb uh, Hanoi, they bomb the 12 day of you know, bombing, B-52 bombing Hanoi, on the way out, flying back to, uh, uh, to I think, to, um, at the time, uh, probably to southern Vietnam or to maybe the aircraft carrier. They just drop all the bomb, leftover bomb on my village. So my village was completely destroyed. So when I grew up, we had nothing. And I mean nothing, okay, literally nothing. No power, no running water, nothing, no road. So the only thing that I know about tech at the time was the flashlight, you know, the torch, the flashlight. And it almost never worked because we didn't have batteries. I think it's your D battery, the same, the equivalent of D battery over here. And, you know, battery was hard to come by. And also at the time it used a light bulb, a little light bulb. And that burnt out all the time. So we almost, we hardly ever able to use, you know, the flashlight. And we only saved it, saved it for a special occasion. And when that happened, it was amazing. I mean, it was so bright because we never, I, I, I had never seen anything so bright like that uh, before. And um, most Night, if we were lucky, we could use kerosene oil, but even kerosene was hard to come by. So that's how I, I know about tech. You know, tech is something that is just different from just using the hammer and, and, and sickle and, and working with a buffalo. It just is something else. That's something that's just amazing. So I didn't know anything else about tech until I was 17 and a half or 18 when I actually moved to the, to the city to go to the college. And at the time, there was no, uh, no IT department. Right? I went to college to be a reporter. But one time I went to the library and there was this computer. It looked like a, t- it looked like a TV, but it had the, the keyboard on it and people were typing on it. And it was really fascinating because, you know, before that, I knew that I had to write with my hands, right? Just handwriting is Everything's handwriting, also including the taking exam, a long exam. And um, the reason why I was so into it, because I was left-handed. Now, in Vietnam, being left-handed, it's like now being gay. It's, it's really like a bad thing. People, people try to hide it. Your family is kind of ashamed of you that you're left-handed because like a taboo. Wow, there's that much so, of a stigma around it. Oh, it's crazy. It, it, it's absolutely crazy if you're left-handed. It's like, it's like when, when I, I remember when my father found I was left-handed, he was so disappointed. He was like, I can see, like, like he's just so disappointed. So um, the entire time I grew up in a village, they tried to force me to use right, the right hand. So every time I use the left hand, they just whip me really fast on the hand. So I have to change, change my, my, my right hand. I, I went to school and tried to learn how to write. You know, you have to use right hand for everything. And uh, another thing is in Vietnam, if you, they, they look at your handwriting. Handwriting is like, it show you how good of a person you are. It's like the, how can I say, the, <laughs> the sign of whether you'll be successful or not. If you have a good, beautiful, really nice handwriting, you have bright future. If your handwriting is all over the place bad, then you just have a bad future. So, and, it, and being left-handed, having to write with the right hand, it's really hard for me to write and make my writing look good. You know what I'm saying? Like make it look good. Mm-hmm. And also, it, it make my hand, my hand get tired really fast. Like after some exam, my right hand literally like completely strained, like tired. And I hate writing. Like I hate it. I just hate having to, to sit for an hour and writing so many things on my right hand. 
So when I saw that people could type on a computer using the keyboard instead of your hand, that means you can use whatever hand you use, it doesn't matter. I, I just loved it. I mean, I, this, is, this is like so fascinating. Like you can completely ignore the thing I hate. So, um, but of course there was, you know, computer was very scarce, like can't find anywhere. So what happened was that uh, in the library, they actually allow you uh, to learn how to type but not on a computer. They printed the keyboard on a piece of paper and give it to you so you can just put your hand on a piece of paper and try to to type. You see what I'm saying? Like, oh, wow. The typing, yeah. Like, that's not just no response, it's pretending. So you just put your hand there and in your mind, you say, you want to start the word, let's say don't, we say D O. So it's just like that. So I learned how to type on a piece of paper. There's no screen, nothing. It's, it, was like the, it was the original touch screen. That's correct. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's nothing. You know, that's no response. Wow. So anyway, so I, I learned like that for maybe a year before they start having computer, more computer library of, of, the, of school. And by the time I could, I could actually touch one, I learned so fast. I learned so fast. I could type faster than people who, you know, who, who actually been working for a year. I just, I'm really good at it. Like really good. I just, I loved it. Just, I just, you know, seeing the cursor on the screen, you know, the, the three AC computer, the cursor on the screen, it's moving as you type, it's mesmerizing. You know, it's just mesmerizing. It's crazy. It's crazy, crazy mesmerizing for me. And then when you type in something and you press enter, you know, something respond, like it's just something come back to you. It's incredible because before that, for me, books, let's just read books. That's it. There's, n- there's never any kind of like feedback. But this is the first time, the first time I saw feedback, I was so mesmerized. I was like completely, absolutely mesmerized. That, that's so pretty think, incredible. Yeah. I mean, even right now, even right now, you don't see the cursor anymore because you use uh, the screen now. We have all kind of thing. But I still love the DOS command. That's why I love it. Because I just go to DOS command, I see the cursor, it, it bring back the memory, you know? And I do this, this you know, type in something, I say syntax error, which is like, oh, man. It's something that come to me, you know, when I first saw that syntax error, I didn't know what it means. I had no idea what it meant because I didn't speak English then. I didn't speak English, you know, like no idea what, what the hell that means, you know, all the, what is E, what's not EXE, why is EXE, you know? Now I know it's executable, but like, why? Or, 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 or like, you know, dot com, why com, why, why com, why not something else? <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's, it's seriously, it was like really incredible um, memories. But that's how that's how I actually approach technology. So I went to college and finished college uh, doing journalism, nothing to do with uh, with, with with computer. And also uh, also I do two things: I do uh, journalism and foreign languages. So I I, I learn English and French. And uh, when I start working as a reporter. Oh, and, and then I had a computer. And then finally, I think maybe a year or two later, I got a computer. It's a four eight six. I remember it's four eight six, uh, running DOS seven, and then later on I upgrade to Windows Windows ninety five, which is an amazing experience. Like Windows ninety five, but anyway, so I just loved it. I took it out and I tried to figure out what happened on the inside and everything. It's just fascinating, and I uh, uh, the computer didn't have a CD ROM, so I bought a CD ROM with my saving. Um, it's a four. I, I think it's a four X CD ROM. And then I upgrade the RAM from four megabyte, I think four megabyte to eight megabyte. I think. Wow! Which was also an amazing experience. And then later on, oh, I do all kind of thing. I try. I, I do uh, like I bought a printer and I print stuff for people and and make money out of it. And then later on, I upgrade to the five uh, uh, to the Celeron, Celeron. I think something Celeron like three hundred megabyte or something. It's so it's so incredibly fast. Later on, so fast. Was this when you were – were you still living in Vietnam at this point? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't come here until 99. So, so anyway, so I, I went to school and, and you know, as I was in, in college, I kind of do it kind of thing like doing computer things, sometimes kind of teaching people how to type, you know, and t- how to type and how to fix some certain little issue here and there with DOS, MS-DOS, install the word processor, also DOS-based. And install like the Vietnamese keyboard for them because like we don't have Vietnamese keyboard on a keyboard, so we have to kind of like manipulate uh, the, the the key, the, the American key to type Vietnamese. For example, type in 
if you want to have the another the, the O with the with the hat on it, you type in O twice. Like O O, we're gonna O with a hat on it. Oh jeez. Yeah, stuff like that. So right now still like that. If you want to type the word Dong as my name, now my name is not just D O N G. It's a D with a dash. So it looks like the it's like a bow and arrow, you know. Uh, o with the with a circumflex on top, like a like umbrella on top. So on a keyboard you type D D. And then O O N G that would appear like like that on screen. So I, I did that for a while. I made some 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 money, and then I got upgraded to a uh, new bigger machines. And then comes the time of uh, CD burning. You know, you burn a CD for people. Like, like you, you <laughs> burn a CD burner, and then you burn uh, you know like uh, um, software for people. Like piracy, pure piracy. But you know, at the time, I have no idea. Right, I have no idea where it's come from. So um, I burn CD for people or burn music, and then the MP3, can, you know, start stop with MP3, which is not yet huge at the time. Like a little bit of, I don't think it's MP3 yet. I think at the time in Vietnam, you still like just just copy the entire CD. You have a CD, you copy the entire CD, you know, a like music CD. So and then I graduated and I worked for the Voice of Vietnam as a reporter. And somehow my boss found out I was a pretty good computer, and it made me basically run the IT for that department, which is also really new. Like at the time, they used mostly typewriter. You know, typewriters are still like prevalent. So they have like two or three computers, so I'm the guy who in charge of them. Right? I take care of them, train people how to use a computer, how to fix the thing, install Windows 95, install Word, uh, uh, Office 6 and Office whatever. Office something, I think Office XP at some point. Were you using those for layout or just strictly for, for word processing? For word processing mostly. We print because most of our radio is just read on the radio. Oh, you don't okay. actually have to do anything else. So it's just do for editing the, the, the word processing and print it out and so also be able to read on the radio. So that was it. And I was worked there for a year and a half before before I left for America. And then, like, so where does the journey go from there? Did you go to CNET right from there? So I came here and I intended to actually um, do my master. But uh, but then I came here and, of course, you know, from a country where there was nothing. And you came to a country where, a country of access. Everything over here in this country is too much of everything, you know. <laughs> and I remember... Still remember flying here to San Francisco. I remember flying from Hanoi to Hong Kong, and then stayed in Hong Kong for eight hours, and I flew from Hong Kong to San Francisco, which took like eleven hours, I think. Long, long flight, um, longest time in my life, obviously at the, at the time. Uh, so I, I landed here, and as I landed, it's like it's like nine p.m., and I looked down from the airplane and I saw so much light underneath I so much light and for the moment I thought that damn we are like flying upside down or something because I saw a lot of stars you know like so I, I thought that the ground was the, was, was the, was the sky because there's so much light down there so um, I landed here and then uh, I think after he had been here for two months I was trying to apply for some kind of job to make some a little extra money, and I applied to be an intern, intern at CNET. And that's how we started. And I think after working there for about four months an intern, they decided to hire me, and I quit uh, you know, my ambition of doing my master. What were you uh, planning uh, for a master in journalism? Yes. Actually, in political science, ah. which is not exactly, which not exactly, you know, um, Something I was so, I mean, in high side, I think it was great, great idea. I, I, I just stop it, you know. So, I mean, with, with that in context where your first introduction to, you know, the idea of tech is literally providing light as, as, a, as a life-changing um, technology. In terms of more like in your specialty uh, with networking, what, what has kind of been the biggest change uh, in that since you started really uh, working seriously in that space? Well, in terms of networking, I have to say the biggest change is the internet speed. When I first working, when I first know the internet, it was so super slow. You know it. I mean, I use the I use a a, a modem. Okay, in Vietnam, I use a modem. It's like three, 
I think it's not even 56K. It's like three, three point something. I forgot. Yeah, it's before 56K. You know, it's just really slow. Uh, so when I came to the, to the States, it was faster, but it's still not that fast. I remember talking to a bunch of people uh, with a beer, I think in the year 2000. And uh, we were talking about like, you know, DSL and then like how we can have faster internet than dial up, whatever. And then one of the guys said, you know, you know, I wish someday we can download something like an entire CD worth of something in a few minutes, you know, or, or no, in, in 10 minutes, as I said that. Now we could do that in, in a few seconds. I mean, we can do that in a few seconds, 100 megabytes, 700 megabytes in a few seconds now, even in my home. So that, and it's still increasing too. It's not even, you know, it's still even get even faster. So I think the biggest by far is the speed of the internet. And that... Also, I think it's a foundation for many things else to happen, you know? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, if you, if you look at the development of, you know, uh, SaaS as like, a, you know, as being viable for business, couldn't happen yeah. without fast internet. Yeah. So I think that by far is the biggest thing. People, I think people, the reason I actually love networking and storage, I, I truly love it. I love them because I really think people don't know or, or don't appreciate them. They don't understand that networking and storage are two things that the, is the, the, the essence of, of, of everything else. Without either, you know, everything else gone or, or stop, you know, working. Like if without the internet, without the networking, you cannot access anything. And without storage, you cannot store anything. And if there's nothing to, to be stored, there's nothing to be accessed, right? So, so people tend to just look at the screen and be mesmerized by what's happening but they don't even think further like what bring this thing to my screen and where that thing stay before i access it so yeah and, and i think that's certainly accelerated by you know uh smart devices kind of extract uh, uh uh you know putting a layer of abstraction between yeah. the, the physical yeah. hardware that we're working with yeah. and uh and the actual you know the actual experience that we have you know it's defragging their uh their smartphone right <laughs> yes no yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> All right. So right now, what do you think is one of the worst trends in IT? I am not sure if this qualifies as IT, but I think the worst trend right now is cryptocurrency. I think that's that's bad. In terms I, of I, for I, I don't think, I don't think the blockchain is a bad thing. It's a good technology, but the cryptocurrency, like the the, the money that you know people try to Bitcoin and and what else? I mean, a ton of them out there. I feel like it just yeah I remember it reminds me of uh, of gold in 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 WoW. Do you play WoW? Have you played WoW and World of Warcraft? I know of WoW. I have never actually played. I play that's the first game I really 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 play and I actually have to say I was addicted. Like many people. I right? many people I would. So in 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 WoW or in many other games you probably play there is in-game money, right? You buy items like whatever. So, so in WoW, there's gold. So you have a, you start with silver. It starts with, with with a copper, one copper, ten copper is one silver, ten silver is one. Oh, hold on, hundred copper is a silver, and hundred silver is a gold. I think that's how it. Um, so it's hard to as you play the game, it's hard to get to a gold. I mean, it's, it's just to take a long time. At least you know at the time at the time when the game you know first came out, it was really hard. So I remember in the game at the time, if you want to buy a flying mount like flying horse a horse that can fly you know or some kind of thing that fly you sit on it so it can go very really fast it 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 costs 600 gold and it takes days to make you know half a gold so it's really 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 expensive and people will start that's what i think that's how all the gold mining business start people in china playing the game just to mine the gold and they can sell the gold on ebay with real money and i remember at the time i I wanted a mount really, really, really bad, and I had a good friend in real life. Good friend, we played game together too. But and then he really wanted me to play with him and help him with some quest or something. So he literally went out there and spent three hundred dollars on eBay and bought six hundred go and gave it to me. Wow! Seriously, and that's at year two thousand. Okay, it's a long time ago. Now he's he was rich. He's rich. He's still rich. But I'm just saying that <laughs> he. I mean, he just like he, he's the kind of guy he cannot wait. He cannot wait. He just want to get it right away. So he just went there and he bought, I think, from three or four people, you know, to get 
uh, second ago, and maybe for himself too, I don't know. But he gave me second ago so I can walk the mouth. And I was the first guy on my in my guild, guild that has the flying mouth. It's a big deal, big deal. If you if you actually share the story about like this woman who actually had sex with another guy to have a mouth. Oh, wow. Flying mouth. Yes, it just Google it. Google so, wow, wow, mouth. And, so, so I'm saying that it's just it's like that. So the value of, ma- of, of gold in wow at the time to me and to my friend is real money. I am willing to pay, you know, $300 or $600 for this XYZ amount of gold, right? And, and it's, it's as good as how much you want it. It's only as valuable as how much you want. And at the time, I really wanted it. And at the time, my friend really wanted it. So it's totally worth first. Totally. It's the same thing with cryptocurrency. That's it. But at the end of the day, though, did you get $300 worth of enjoyment out of getting that mount? Oh, yes. Not for (laughs) me, yes. Oh, I think I got more than that. I mean, And the thing is, I'm telling you, that is just like, that is a 60% mount. Like the mount that can make you travel only 60% faster than walking. There's a mount, 100% mount. It's like like 6,000 go, I'm telling you. So it was really, really, I mean, at the time, people were like, it's really, if you Google a gold miner, you will see that that start the whole new industry of gold mining. And, and a ton of people are doing that. A ton of people are doing that just for a living. They go in there, they grind, go grinding. They go in there and kill, you know, some some animal or whatever over and over. And next time you kill, you drop some silver or drop something. So you should do it over and over to get gold so you can sell for real money. And a lot of people in China make a ton of money. They became, they became actually rich from selling wow go so it, google but so it's the same thing i think it's the same exact same thing is, so is, reason- is the danger there then that people would lose sight of the fact that they're speculating on a cryptocurrency and and you know look at that as a uh you know a, a legitimate investment and then lose lose sight of the fact that hey this is a bunch of code on a you know computer and this could all end you know the value of this is just based on other people valuing it there's nothing really exactly. on the back it, end of it is exactly there's nothing actually attached to it of course you know value in the end is about how much people want mm-hmm. that's the thing in the end but the thing is with real currency is still have something back it up so if a major people don't want it it still has value because it's you know it it just back up with certain thing in real life. With cryptocurrency, there's nothing. It's just basically how much people want it. That's it. So right now they are just you know uh, uh, literally investing on hype. The more hype it is, the better it is. At some point, maybe it can be transformed into something interesting, like something that you can attach to something. Then maybe, and that is the that would be the the blockchain technology. But this. The currency itself, in many ways, it just, it's nothing illegal about it, but it is just, just you know, completely a game without any game, you know, like without any gameplay. Just like you create some goal, you know, in the game, but there's no game, just go, and then somehow it make people want it because it's going to be great in the future. And I, but what for, right? If you have a, if you have a you know, Bitcoin, for example, there is no point in in using it as for anything because if you use it to buy something tomorrow the the, the price going to go up or down why should you use it to buy anything right so there's no actual use of bitcoin there's no actual use of it other than selling to somebody who want to own some so that somebody can sell again with somebody who want to own some that's all it is and i feel like that is that is a big distraction it's completely and i think it's a big distraction is also uh, uh, harming the the blockchain because people kind of associate blockchain technology with cryptocurrency. Do you get it? Mm-hmm. So, so and the blockchain is different. It's just like the way you can secure something without a single entity. So it's two different things, and it can be applied for almost anything. It's not just money or or, or whatever. And and I think it, you need to be looked at as a different way or a different different angle than you know cryptocurrency yeah i I do think if there is a big crash that the blockchain itself will be tarnished uh when really you know we're seeing or starting to see the un uh look into using blockchain for you know uh uh, keeping track of 
um, humanitarian efforts and that yeah. kind of stuff. So th- there are some uh, some very interesting a, applications outside of just crypto. Yeah, but the problem is right now is a, you know is primarily used for to 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 uh, to mine or to sell um, cryptocurrency. And it's it's also used to get uh, tons of venture funding for any startup out there too. Exactly. <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of people actually get sucked in. I have a friend. I'm not saying his name here. But he got sucked in. He just uh, invested a lot on a on a on a uh, mining um, kind of the whole far- mining farm, like having like I think forty or fifty uh, video cart. You oh, know, wow. yeah. You go to his room. It's like so hot. It literally is so freaking hot. And I just I'm telling. You, I said, look, I don't know how much you make from this in terms of uh, in terms of. Uh, of cryptocurrency, but I'm I, I can say for sure that your 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 PG and E bill is going to be really really high. It's great for it. All right. So alternatively, what are some of the best trends that you've seen recently in IT and technology in general, Don? Well, the best is really hard for me to say what the best really because I for one, I'm kind of desensitized. Like I've seen so many things over the years. And a lot of the time, the thing that they hype up didn't become anything in the end. But overall, I think the great thing is that we are moving a lot more mobile. So the the edge of sitting at a computer is 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 I kind of kind of is gone now. You know, if you remember, people used to sit there by a computer all the time. Now they can move around and still do something. So is that's good because you know. In one way, it's bad because people like just glue to the small screen. But in a way, it's good because people can still move around when doing something. So when when being connected, so that is good. Another another thing I think is really cool, and I think it's cool even though I don't do it much, is the 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 VR, you know, and 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 AR. I think that helps a lot with many different things. It's not just for game. Right now, it's mostly gaming. Like virtual reality, it's most for, for gaming, but I think in the future it can be used to to do other things like you know um, helping with patients or design something that you know don't have to actually spend money on building actual actual sample, you know. Yeah, I'm, that, I'm excited for the possibility of AR um, actually yeah. to kind of supplant monitors in the workplace. You know, if you just be able to wear a pair of glasses and you have a display anywhere you're looking, I think that's that's a pretty cool idea. Yeah, and also the fact that, for example, if you look at something or whatever you see, in fact, and you don't know what it is, if you go into a forest or you don't know what this plant is, for example, you can just use Google Lens and figure it out right then. It tells you what tree it is or what plant it is or what animal it is. That's incredible. You know, it's it, that's the thing I think is incredible. It just it's pre, I think is bring the human knowledge kind of like aggregate human knowledge and bring it to everybody at almost any given time. And that that makes the, the human kind so much more powerful than what we were, you know, like 20 or even, even 10, 15 years ago, you know, in terms of access to knowledge. Well, and that ties into your, your first trend of, uh, of mobility, right? Yeah, yeah, that's correct, yeah. All right, so Dong, what do you do when you're not uh, working in IT? When you're not, uh, you know, blogging? What are you doing uh, outside of outside of tech? So, so, well, when I uh, reside from CNET, I actually travel a lot. I took my family to Europe. I took my family to uh, to Asia, and we do a lot of traveling. Uh, I just try to be with my daughter as much as I can. Seriously, so so that's what I've been doing in the past, you know, few months. Uh, but mostly because to kind of compensate for the fact that I had been working too much, like 18 years before, you know. So, in the past few months, we do a lot of traveling. Uh, but for me personally, what I don't, what I, my, my hobby is cooking. I cook a lot. If you notice, my screen name for uh, for Skype is rice and stir fry. And people people make fun of me, like say, oh, you're Asian and you use rice and stir fry. You know, it's so stupid. It's, you know, so stereotyping. I say, look, but that's what I do. I, I cook a lot. I do a lot of rice and stir fry. And I do amazing rice and stir fry, you know. So I do a lot of cooking. I fix, you know, stuff around. I am honestly always busy. I never have any dull moment. Like I only don't have enough time. There's so many things to do, you know. Um, 
So, and also I read a lot, but I now I mostly do actually listen a lot out of your book because you can do something else in, in the meantime, or you can run or you can take a hike and still listen to a book. That's awesome. You know, that's that, that also is what I like the most about like back to the to mobile kind of trend. Uh, you can just walk, take a hike and still read a book. That's incredible. You know, that's just so satisfying. And I think for me personally, I like being efficient, like getting the most done out of the least time. So I know I can't wait for self-driving cars so I can I can yeah, do something, can do something productive in my commute. Right? Yeah, like I would love to have a self-driving car that that when I want to drive, I drive too. Right? Something I like driving. Mm-hmm. But then if I need to do something, like I need to work, somebody call me, I need to fix something, I can go back to my laptop and hey, you drive and let me, let me fix this. You know. So that I think that's that is something too. I mean, yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to self-driving car too. That's good. Not flying cars, but no. sound driving cars. Yeah. So uh, on that line, any book recommendations for anybody interested in IT or tech? That's the thing. I don't read books much about IT or tech. Mm-hmm. I actually read books. I like, you know, I like, um, I like self-help book. I like uh, uh, the kind of book, talk about science book. Like I, I'm reading right now the book called What Ifs. You know, What If? Uh, so it's a book that people actually ask crazy questions, like really crazy question, and then they they try to answer it like with scientific uh, uh, um, explanation. For example, they ask, "What if everybody on Earth jump at the same time?" You see what I'm saying? Like, what if, what if all of us jump at the same time? What would happen? So uh, they can they they answer it. They actually literally doing calculation and answer it. Or they say like, what if everybody stay at one spot? What would happen? And jump. And that's cool. Another book I like is um, it's called Stuff Matters. They talk about um, materials like 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 concrete, like chocolate. Like just stuff around you, like paper, you know, like you see paper, we use paper all the time. We have no idea what come from, how it is, how many type it is, why it is glossy like this, why it's not glossy like this, what is the ink is. Like so many things, is this thing that we actually glossing over every day, we don't even pay attention. There's so many material we use every day, literally every day. And uh, we, and the book kind of lets you know that you know so little about them. And 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 it's good to know about them. So I really like that book. Stuff matters. So it's so I actually I read it and I do it again because I want to read more about it. some stuff is not really interesting or too far away for me, but some like paper or chocolate, uh, it's just like you know it's, in, it's fascinating. It's really fascinating. Cool. We'll have to put some links to those uh, in the post for uh, for this interview. Yeah. This, that's really cool. Um, so that book, Stuff matters. Really cool. Yeah. Any uh, any uh, since you're uh, uh, a gourmet, uh, any uh, any cookbooks that out there that you would recommend for aspiring that's chefs? Thing, I think that's the thing too. I actually, you see, it's funny thing is that what I I realize that people cook with recipe over here in, in 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 America. Like like, and by recipe I mean like, okay, you take you know uh, two teaspoon of this and three of that, and then you know one ounce of this and two and two uh, pound of that. You see, in Vietnam we don't have a kind of you know that kind of something available like that for you. So all you can have you have all this here, and like maybe you have one chicken, maybe you have like one or three pieces of garlic. And then you can get some some lemon from your your your, your garden. So we don't and salt in there, some salt there. So we don't have a like like very specific measurement when cooking something. You have to cook something based on what you 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 know from other time you've cooked. So even right now when I cook, I never use any measurement. When I put something in something, I just completely bone pocket, like just spray it in and, and mix it and smell it and look at it and see how it is and and improve over it. Like over time, okay, maybe next time put a little bit more, you know, a little bit more salt in here, a little bit more uh, um, pepper next time or maybe less pepper next time, stuff like that. So I don't read a book about cooking, really. I just I – just, Read about like you know what is healthy, what's not healthy, and try to use more healthy 
uh, more uh, kind of like kind of good ingredients and less bad stuff. But I don't really use any any recipe. And the same thing for my my mom. My mom never used any recipe, and and I'm telling my mom cook great. Same as same as same as my dad. My dad didn't cook very much, but we all cook like that. And I learned I, by looking from how they do things. So kind of so, in the yeah. same, so kind of in the same vein. Um, how do you uh, how do you get your caffeine uh, during the day? I know it's very important for a lot of IT so folks. That is the it's funny thing that I actually don't drink coffee that much at all. Before I came to America, I even I only drink coffee when I went out with my friend like in Vietnam. You know, if you go to any cafe in Vietnam in Hanoi, and I recommend you you do, you can find out how amazing coffee can. Be. Um, coffee in Vietnam is amazing. Seriously, it, you know. When I first came here, I tried Starbucks one or twice, and I said, I cannot believe people drink this because like, it's so not flavorful. Completely not like you know, a coffee in Vietnam, but I drink coffee as a some like special thing. Like If I go to a cafe with friends, sit down, talk, I drink coffee, but I don't drink coffee as the daily thing. I don't even now at home here, I drink coffee when my wife. Uh, make me some like Sunday, you know, Saturday morning or in the morning uh, when we kind of can lazy around, uh, lazy, be lazy and sit around, chit chat, and we drink some coffee. But I don't drink coffee as as a ritual to start a day. And I, right now, I'm having a glass of water in front of me right now. I don't drink, uh, not no coffee, no coffee today, in, and I don't uh, miss it. It, so my idea of Vietnamese coffee, right, is what is that with yeah. condensed milk and it's cold brewed, right? Is that do I have that any of that right? Uh, is, that is is somewhat right. Yeah, is is yeah. You're gonna find that. You're gonna find uh, that's called uh, cafe no, basically brow coffee. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you can have that hot or with ice. Doesn't matter. But uh, the way they make it over here, uh, they you, know, you can find some in some Vietnamese restaurant. It's not the same as the what they make in in Vietnam. It's very different. I don't know how to how to explain it. It's just different. You know, it's just and it's very strong. It's very strong. Uh, in Vietnam, somehow the coffee there is so strong. Like last time I was there, like system, you know, maybe like maybe a month ago, I was this place and I drink two. I had two coffee because so good. Just I just drink. I had I well, I have one more. So I had two coffee. It's not that that big. It's pretty small. You know, like, you know how it is. It's not that big. Like a huge amount. And after that, <laughs> the rest of the day, my hand was shaking. Like that's how strong. Like. Something's gonna happen. Something's gonna happen. I was, I feel all wound up, and it's crazy. And that's just, that's how strong the coffee is. So, I should have uh, had just one. But it was, mm-hmm. oh, we'll we'll get you out of here on these last two questions here. Um, okay. Who would you like to see answer the IT origins uh, interview questions? I seriously, I don't really have anyone in mind that I want to know the from. With the people that I know from, I already read about them. You know, like Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. I can't already, there's a book about that. Uh, so I would well, ask. We couldn't Ed, book them anyway, Donk, so don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, like, I'm just saying, like, you know, if I would ask you, how would you start with IT? Uh, you know, it, it's uh, it's funny. Uh, I, I get teased about this in the office, but uh, when I was a little kid, I used to love reading like the Best Buy ads oh. and oh, like, re- and reading yeah. about all the <laughs> reading about all the processors and be like, oh, this one's a hundred megahertz faster. It's so cool. Yeah, yeah, I, I got it. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, <laughs> the PC world, the PC world is crazy. The PC world and and a few other magazines I used to have. I, I used to love them. Like, oh my god, you know, look at this photo, look at these numbers. I somehow numbers and. It's just so it's just so interesting, you know what I'm saying? Like it's just, like it's just, so to some people and to my sisters, they had absolutely no interest. But for me, it was so interesting, like to see the numbers and and how many megabyte of RAM and how many things. Oh my god, you know, it's just crazy. Yeah, it, it gives you some objective uh, measure to right. compare it to and say, oh, last year it was half this, you know. Yeah, yes, I can totally believe that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and we'll get you on this. Best career advice you've received? Best career advice, I would say that is happened to me a long time ago. And I don't think it's a career advice, really, but it's something I actually follow. I really follow this. And I, I always telling me this. And I paraphrase, but I don't know exactly what he told me, but he was my uh, martial art teacher. And at one point, I... I tried to do some, I, I trained martial arts for a long time, by the way. Ever since I was five, until I was like 26. Um, 
So at one point, I tried this move, like go spinning kick, and it was so hard, and I fell so many times, and 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 I have trouble with it. And I think the trouble mostly now, you know, in hindsight, I realize because I am, like I said, I was left-handed, but then I was, I have to act like I was right-handed. You see what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. when I try to move, I do that as a right-handed person. And it was so hard for me because, like, it's not right. So anyway, so I was crying and kind of crying, not crying, but kind of crying, like, we were upset. And the teacher said, like, Look, I know that you think you're behind your friend here, uh, this guy X Y Z here. But here's the thing: it's not about you and him. It's always you against yourself. Remember that. It's between you and you. You don't you don't try to be better than him or him or him. You try to be better than yourself. Meaning that if tomorrow we can do just a little bit better than what we today, be happy. Okay. It was really sad. Always just focus on yourself. In t- when it comes to being to to development, focus on yourself. Don't just compare yourself with others and and get and get you know uh, uh, um, discouraged because you're worse, or get you know uh, 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 promised when you're better. Just focus on the fact that you can be better than what you think you are today. That's what he told me. And that what I follow. I never compare myself to anyone. I just like see what I want to make sure that I try to be better and be better tomorrow. In everything I do, literally everything, in cooking, cleaning the house, and and washing my car. If I do this next time, I do it. Maybe I try to do better. You know, maybe maybe to make my car cleaner a little bit in a little bit shorter time. You know, that's that's how in my mind every time I've seen for many years how to be. Better than myself. That's it. That's, that's my. I think that's a, that is the only advice, like I consistently remind myself of for so many years. You know, and it, and actually helped me through so many things. It helps me through, uh, you know, the hardship in Vietnam, and it it helped me survive here. You know, coming here, knowing nobody, uh, here in the state, uh, and and with so many stuff happened. But, you know, it actually helped me go through. So that, the what I tell people, hey, do not just, just, just focus on being better than yourself. Uh, being better tomorrow than yourself today or being better today than you were yesterday. Words to live by. Yeah, thanks, that's thanks. it. Dongno, I appreciate your time for IT Origins. If uh, people want to check out uh, your new site, it's Dongno's, uh, D O. N G K N O W S dot com. Uh, that's right. All sorts of cool reviews, blog posts, and uh, all sorts it. of other how tos, right? That's the, yes, that's correct. That's the guy whose name is Dong, and he knows. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a synergy that is, seems divine. Well, we'll find out how much he knows. But uh, <laughs> well, I hope people come there and check it out because that's a new uh, new site. So I don't have any kind of advertisement affer- for my site. But. Um, I hope people come there because whatever I say there, I actually use. I, that's my real experience. And it's not uh, like, you know, somebody pay me to do that. I do that seriously out of my own passion for technology. I I don't start it because I need a job or I need you know, like to make money, even though yeah, it's nice to make money from the side, obviously. But uh, I do that because I feel like, you know what, I've been writing for 18 years. Now I'm doing consulting. But... At some point, I just feel I need some platform to express my idea and also to to tell people what is the right thing, a good thing to do in certain thing, you know, mm-hmm. in certain categories. So mostly just you know to help out or to connect to people, you know. That's kind of what I miss too. All right. Well, we'll be back next Thursday with another IT Origins interview uh, again. Dongno, thank you so much, and uh, we will catch you later. Thank you. Thanks for having me.